forgot to record it. So here we go. So like I was saying, we're going to talk about love. Now, to begin with, there's a lot of us, when you talk about love, everybody automatically goes to that kind of Christian idea of love or that romantic idea of love. Um, the Christian idea of love is a probationary status of life. You're only going to get some of that divine love, that love of the spirit, the healing touch of Jesus. If you're doing the right thing at the right time, you're on probation at all times. That romantic notion of love, as you get right down to it and look at the romantic movies that we see, those tear jerkers, those rom-coms, those wonderful stories, hell, even the notebook. Usually it has a lot to do. Sometimes it's kind of a frigid woman being pursued by an impotent man. And when they get together, all that's fixed, blah, blah, blah. Or it is, it's just usually a mess. But that's what we get, that's what we see every day. That's what we're told is love. Now there's a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of styles of love, isn't there? I love ice cream. Um, I love a good beer. Um, I love a good looking car. I love beef jerky. <laughs> I love my children. I love my mom and dad. All of that is kind of a spectrum of love, isn't it? The confusion always comes up when we start talking about in this spirituality, what does the divine love look like? And what does the love of a partner look like? How is that to be perceived? Well, we have a whole lot of interesting stories in the lore. With regards to divine love, it doesn't come out and say, well, for Jesus, for the Lord so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we might be saved from sin and have everlasting life. It doesn't come out and say that, does it? And for most of us, that's what we've been taught all our life. And if we don't see that or we don't hear that, well, maybe we're kind of on our own, ain't we? Maybe that's not something. So we'll just stick with courage and we'll stick with manly men doing manly things and womenly women doing womenly things. And witchy things and tough things and all that kind of nonsense and call it good. And we'll form groups of each other and we'll find out who we don't like and we'll sit around the table and we'll have discussions about how much we're the good people and they're the bad people. And all of a sudden we, well, we think we form some good bonds there. We think we've got it figured out. We, we're, we're the nice people and they're the bad people. And problem with it is if those bad people disappear tomorrow, what have you got left? What have you got left worthy of associating each other with, with each other? That old boy over there, he might smell a little bit and you take a bath. That person over there, they chew with their mouth open. I heard that woman fart. You know, it's going to be some shit like that. The kind of tenuous bonds that we might think are so strong as we sit at the table of the nice people, us talking about the bad people, them, um, if they go away, then what? They're doing the same thing. They're talking about how great they are because this group of people over here, they don't like them. So in truth, we owe them a debt of gratitude. We owe the Negro, the Jew, the downtrodden, we owe them a debt of gratitude because they give us a reason to get together. But what happens if that disappears? What happens if we lose that? Should we talk about loving each other? Because nobody's going to buy into that nonsense of love thy neighbor as thyself, saith the Lord thy God. We've all said, no, 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 we're not playing that game. So what are we going to do? How are we going to begin to express at any kind of healthy level what it means to share some kind of solid affection in all the wide spectrum that we might have it? From our children to our closest friends to our to our family, to the person that sits next to us. How are we gonna to learn to express that? Some of it can be found in the Lord. Some of the most beautiful aspects of it can be found in the Lord. When Tyr sacrifices his hand to the Fenris wolf, is that not an act of love for the people around him? 
that's that's an act of love, folks. What about Frey and Gerda? When Frey ascends to the throne, he's not supposed to be sitting on and is no way ready to <laughs> handle what he's fixing to see. And it blows his lips off and he gets a good look at Gerda and he's like, whoa, how worse it is to wait and be denied to that longed for joy. See, he has to change. He has to give up um, some of the younger mentality. He has to become something better to secure her hand and be the partner she needs to be. He, she needs him to be, and she needs to be for him. That's an act of love too. What about, what about Sigurd and Brunhild? So when Sigurd slays his demons and unlearns all the negative teachings he's been taught and finally has what it takes within himself to walk through the fire and free her from the Bernie and reveal the beauty of who she is to the world, there's a wonderful love story there too. I wish I could remember the vow that he gives her and she gives him, but they pretty much say there will be no other but you. That's a wonderful, powerful imagery of love. How come we don't talk about that? <laughs> it doesn't fit a narrative. What about Loki and Sigyn? What about when she, uh, what about when Sigyn has to sacrifice who he is? If you, she sacrifices who she is when he gets bound by his son's guts and she no longer gets to become anything because she's got to keep the, the venom from dropping in his face, she sacrifices everything she might ever become, everything she might ever grow into to keep the venom from dropping in his eyes. And when it does, she gonna get a cussing. Is that love? We have to ask ourselves some really interesting questions. When Odin comes down, Odin, Vili, and Ve, and they give those first gifts to Ask and Embla, the Ash and the Elm, and they create these, or they perfect these living creatures into what we know as humanity, humans like you and I, is that an act of love? Is that gift an act of love? Because if we can identify that as an act of love, we have ground to stand on that, well, maybe, maybe we have the opportunity to begin truly loving ourselves, And that's a real interesting proposition. See, because I've always said, you can't give something away you ain't got. But that's kind of vague and nebulous. They were just kind of, a lot of people, well, they're just fooling around. They gave us these gifts to see what would happen. They've asked us to join them at the table, go through life, figure it out, have at it. But there's not really anything after that, is there? Or is there? When Rig makes the generational visits from the great grandparents to the grandparents to the parents, my, is that an act of kindness or is that an act of love? Is it simply an act of benevolence? Or is the greater aspect of love when the three generations have that first son and the style, the well being, the love? that is given in the raising of those three sets of grandchildren that come from that meeting, that copulation. One of the things we've really got to look at with regard to this, we see great acts of heroism, we see great acts of love. And, and it is best, I think, described in Sigurd when he, un, when he slays the demon of all of the things he's been taught that are negative. You have to hate that person over there because, well, they screwed me over. And since you love me, that automatically means you hate him. And where does that build Sigurd up? Where does that build us up? Where does that give a value to who we are? Well, it's kind of shallow, isn't it? Just like I was talking about earlier. These people sitting at all this table, we're, we're all going to sit here. We're going to have a nice discussion. And we're going to talk about how much we don't like them over there. And we're all going to bond. We're going to call it love and friendship and fellowship. And we're going to be all be happy. And they're going to do the same. And you each owe each other a debt of gratitude. 
And if one of them disappears, then what? The entirety of your association has been based on the shallowest forms of association, that is, hate and not love. One of the things we've got to really begin to understand with regards to also truth is the ability to value ourselves. You can't give something away you ain't got. How do I love myself? Isn't it kind of creepy? You mean love yourself. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. It's been a running joke with some people around here that nobody loves Brian Wilton like Brian Wilton. <laughs> you got to start that somewhere see that didn't start out because i believed in myself that started out because i had to go through a lot of learning most of the relationships that i have seen and that i have counseled are not based on love they're based on thwarted wanting i.e it was a conditional approach i'll give you for instance let's say somebody i know is is a really good person i love them dearly okay um perhaps perhaps we don't talk for two weeks perhaps we don't talk for six months perhaps we go two years we don't say a word to each other well do i still love that person or should i love that person see because if i love myself I'm confident enough to understand that when I do get called back, let me pick right at where we left off. Don't miss a beat. Everything's honky dory. I got you. There's something really powerful in being able to do that. <clears throat> I have seen people absolutely come apart when the conditions for their love were not met, i.e., I gave you what I thought was my love and you didn't live up to those conditions. Therefore, you don't love me. Is that you talking or is that the ego talking? See, because if somebody doesn't live up to them expectations, ooh, what's everybody gonna think? Ooh, man, that person, you gave them your best and they kind of fluffed it off and they went and did their own thing. Now all of a sudden you're, uh, you're standing there kind of looking dumb. Does it change your hair color? Did it make you heavier? Did it make you lose weight? Did it make you shorter? Did it make you taller? Did it change a single thing about you? Nope. Didn't change anything about you. But it did threaten your ego. So you, we got to figure that part of it out. The great teachers of this world that exemplify what that is supposed to be, what love is supposed to be like, are not typically the kind of people you're going to find in Ossetry. <laughs> when we come into this, there's a real powerful temptation to simply take some of our old prejudices and biases and some of the things we like and dislike, uh, kind of dust them off, give them a new coat of paint, change their name, and keep on operating in the same manner that we operated before we showed up here and then have the audacity to say well this isn't working i'm going to go back to being christian or i'm going to go be hindu or i think i'll take up buddhism and yoga um, if nothing changes nothing changes what would be the most radical thing we could do when we come to that crossroads and change the foundations of our spiritual belief. Well, I would submit to you that it might be to love yourself. It might be to take a good long look at yourself and realize you can love that person and that person and that person. You can give it as a gift. You can offer the very best of who you are and what you are, share it with an open mind and an open heart to those around you, those people who are willing to stand beside you. Soon enough, the wheat will separate itself from the chaff <coughs> and don't put any conditions on it. That's a tall order. That's a scary thing, isn't it? Shit, yeah, people are going to abuse it. 
Yes, people are going to stab you in the back. Yes, people are going to take advantage of that. Yes, you're going to get hurt. But isn't that part of the heathen lifestyle? All pain, all struggle is growth. Are we to not apply that same concept when it comes to love? Or just the physical part of it? Are we just going to talk about the physical part of it, but not talk about the emotional part of it? Well, I'm not going to love that person because, well, they smell funny and, and they may not receive, they may not give it back. And what have you lost? <laughs> Courage is at the top of the list of those nine noble virtues, I firmly believe, because sometimes we have to have the courage to offer love. There'll be a lot of people that are scared of it. There'll be a lot of people who want to say bad things about it. There'll be a lot of people who want to dress it up and say something that I'm not saying. Some of the best things that we might ever develop within this new path is the ability to care for someone without expecting anything in return. In a, in, a, in a venue, a spirituality and a faith that prizes honesty and integrity and courage, what success do you think that might lead you to? What success do you think that might allow the person you're offering it to, to do? That is one of the secrets of why I'm successful at what I do with the people that I talk to. I don't, I don't fancy, I don't, I don't fancy it up and give them the very best I can. I offer them full on support. I share my heart with them. <laughs> I've been a senior, an NCO in, in the infantry. I know what it means to challenge someone to make them grow physically, to make them tougher, smarter, stronger, faster, quicker, more deadly. Anybody can fucking do that. There's no challenge in that. Lead the way. Read a book. Be accountable. That's the big thing. Be accountable. <laughs> Set the example. Those are all things anybody can do. Those are all things anyone can jump up and give it a shot and make a little money at. Those are all things people can do in this world and no one will question, give it a second guess. Well, I know that's an established pattern and I understand that there's no, you don't really have to get tied up in that. <laughs> but if you begin to love yourself to the point where you can reach out to someone that's in pain and say, you can make it a little bit longer. Stand up, try it again. I got you. Well, now there's something really, really powerful in that, isn't it? Now all of a sudden we start looking at love as maybe a, a little bit more powerful thing. Why? If you want to see a big tough Viking crumble to his knees and bawl like a bitch, break his heart. He'll fold faster than if you broke both his legs every single time. If you give him a little bit of love from that position, he will stand up and wrestle a fucking elephant for you. <clears throat> that's the power of love I think we do ourselves a huge disservice in not embracing what that entails what that could mean what that could do for us to share that without condition to other people that show up in this spirituality most of the time because things are screwed up somewhere in their life it ain't going, they ain't showing up here because it's all hunky dory they ain't showing up here because this is the latest fad they're not showing up here because, well, I would just, you know, maybe, you know, I thought, well, you know, I read a book and somebody wrote. And <laughs> occasionally they will. Occasionally there'll be some thinkers show up. But I have yet to see a thinker emulate the actions, the patterns, the ideas that they read about in so many of these books and find the answer to a spirituality. Doesn't work. That ain't how it works. At some point, you got to be brave. You have to love yourself enough. Everybody says, well, you got to be brave to love. No, you don't. You got to love yourself. If you love yourself, there's no fear in if somebody doesn't reciprocate that. How do I do that? What am I worth? How do I start to truly give a shit about myself? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. <laughs> Number one is the mindfulness and meditation and taking care of ourselves. 
I've said it many times. And I got it from Alan Watts, who was a hell of a lot smarter than any of us. <laughs> he said, that meditation is when you understand that the presence behind all of those thoughts is so much greater than anything that we might think of in our own minds. It's like so many birds chattering outside the windows. That's our thoughts. And if you're constantly thinking thoughts that are dragging you down, that are making you second guess, that are depressing you, is that an act of love for yourself? Is that how you would love someone by feeding? If you have a child, would you feed your child that set of thoughts and say, well, that's how I love you? That needs to be addressed. That needs to be looked at. <laughs> and then we start working on it. See, we have example after example in our lore of all of these divine beings setting an example of how to deal with these situations we might come to. When Odin lost the throne in the first war and then went to the very edge of the universe and hung himself on the tree, and when he fell, picked up, heard the songs of his ancestors and picked up the runes and then became worthy to sit next to Frigga on that throne and rule over his kingdom again. Is that not an act of love for a woman? If you're Odin, who gives a shit about it? You can go build another one. But there's a woman sitting there. Ooh, maybe I better do something to figure this out. Sometimes we have to sacrifice some of those ideas we think make us grand. I'm not the smartest. I ain't the fastest. I ain't the best looking. I ain't the smoothest talk. But what I am is honest about it. And if you can do that and take a good long look and develop a little insight and offer some legitimate, no holds barred, you don't have to reciprocate. I got you kind of, kind of support and love for another person. You'd be amazed how your life will change. You would be amazed. <laughs> I've done it for over a decade now. I think I have a pretty good life. I've been through some tough, tough times. I have found myself surrounded by people who did not forget that one time I reached out to them and said, I got you, keep trying, you can do this. People believe in you, you're worth loving. Something that simple. You go through the toughest of times, you might look around and realize then people are all right there with a hand to pick you up. Holy cow, is that not what a village does? Is that not what a tribe does for the people in its community? You don't let somebody fall. You pick them up and help move on down the road. <coughs> That's love. Love for our children. Just like I said, I'm not going to feed my daughter or my sons the damn thoughts that I have had that brought me to some really tough spots in the world. That means I got to grow up. It means I got to love myself because I love them. When it comes to my parents, I want to be that kind of individual that when they're gone, people will say, well, their kids turned out pretty good, but he's real successful. That's because I love them. See, I think sometimes we're afraid of the responsibility that goes with offering the best of our hearts to someone, even though they might be sick, even though they might be toxic, even though they might not return it in kind. Well, the alternative to not doing that, the alternative to not having the courage to show that kind of spirit of healthy and healthy love is a chaos that will eat your soul. Think about it. Imagine if you walked through life knowing that every person that you met, that you'd ever been around, that you'd ever loved, um, would screw you over, would hurt you, would do their best to take, take what you offer and run with it. They would do their best to hurt, the, stab you in the back, hurt your heart, lie to you, steal, cheat, deceive, while you might end up like the Joker. Is that not the story of that? how this man could not find a place in society, how the love that he thought he had was a lie. Look what he became. <laughs> I got news for you people. There are men all over this world in that same boat. 
And there are women all over this world who when it comes time to enjoy the company of their partner, they can't relax because he's going to do something mean. He's going to say something shitty or she's going to say something mean. She's going to say something shitty. So they busy themselves with, well, did you do the dish? Well, I need to get the trash. Let's get, well, I need to do this. I need to do that. We'll just call it a marriage. That's not love. There's a lot of work left there. <coughs> Frey and Gerder both made sacrifices to be together. Sigurd and Brunhild, they did their best. The world ate their lunch and took their lives. Balder and Nana, who knows how, what they went through in there as they made their way through time and Helheim as they stood by each other's side. But I'll tell you this, when he came back, he had what it took, he had what it takes to stand in his father's stead and take charge of it all. Something real important there. Had a good woman by his side all the way. One whose heart literally burst when he lost his life. <laughs> we can, and you know, like I say, Heather's told me this a couple of times, I still can't quite get it right. But we plug into the people we meet in a lot of different ways. We plug in over here because of what we don't like. We plug in over here because we like the same football team. We plug in over here because of this, that, or the other. But very, very rarely will we plug in from right here to right there. Have the courage to try to cultivate that. Have the courage to try to reach out and love somebody. I promise you, more than likely, they're not going to understand it. More than likely, when you offer nothing but unconditional love and support to someone, they're not going to get it. What does this guy want? What does this woman want? What are they trying to do? What if this hurts? What if they lie to me? What if they do? What if they do? <laughs> Never. Leo Buscaglia, in 1969, wrote, uh, taught a course at US, uh, UC Berkeley. Um, on love, actual physical, chemical changes that occur in a human's body when someone loves someone else. He wrote a book on it, and it's a red book. It's a little paperback, it says love on it. One of the best books I ever read. I read it when I was, let's see here, I was 20, I, went, was, going, <laughs> I was going through uh, the first time I sobered up. I was about 18 years old. And I had lived a wild, wild life. <clears throat> Very painful life. And I think there's a lot of people that can identify with the misspent youth and some of the shit we've done and all that other stuff. But I had an old Italian sponsor. He fought, he landed at the beaches of Anzio. <laughs> and uh, his name was uh, Pascali Morello. And he was an old Italian man. He took me under his wing and he gave me that book by Leo Buscaglia. And it was these, you know, you see these Italian families with the big hugs and the kisses on each cheek and the dinners that they eat. And they celebrate together and it's the big family and it's warm and it's loving and it's always over the top, isn't it? It's always some grand gesture and they're shaking the hands and they're, <laughs> we can do the same thing. We used to do the same thing in the meat halls. We used to do the same thing, welcome everybody and let the hero have the good seat. Come on in. And, and the lady would serve the meat and it was a great, and we were not afraid to care about each other. We were not afraid to share love with each other. And we get in this modern world and it's so fast and we get busy with some idea or that idea or the responsibilities at work. Well, that doesn't quite seem to be time for that, does it? Isn't that a shame? Should we continue to subscribe to that mythology of industrialization as if it might be good for us? When all of us in the bottom of our hearts know I am no longer being, uh, my needs are not being met uh, spiritually or emotionally uh, certainly not physically, mentally I'm overtaxed. <laughs> also true is that idea. And most of these, indeed most of these polytheistic indigenous faiths are that idea that can stop that, that can bring us back to being the well-rounded individuals. And I think one of the greatest re ingredients for the recipe of success that is involved in that is the courage to love someone. Not because you're gonna get laid, 
but because you can love someone. That takes courage. When you go out there tomorrow and somebody says something shitty to you and they say, and they have, go out of their way to make some kind of stupid remark, do you have what it takes to realize that didn't change anything about me? I'm not going to subscribe to a series of angry thoughts so I can feed off of those negative chemicals flooding my body. Instead, I'm going to take it for what it is, simply words, and I'm going to continue to do the best I can with what I've got. And maybe, just maybe, you can take care of yourself a little bit better than you did the day before. Start by loving yourself, and that's how you do it. Not everything everybody says or does is designed to hurt you. It might beat up your ego, but it doesn't change anything about you. Be brave enough to love. Get your heart broke and then be brave enough to love again. I hope it's not a drive-by. I'm in a rough part of town. <laughs> that motherfucker don't love me, does he? <laughs> Guys, I think that's all I got on love. I think it's a vitally important aspect to everything we're trying to do. And if somebody, if more than some one person doesn't start doing it, <laughs> it's just going to take a little bit longer. We got to start doing it. I'm fortunate enough to have some really wonderful people in my life that I'm able to do that with. And it's just, it's been, it's just an amazing blessing. And I, I really hope that everybody that comes on or listens to this finds somebody that you can do that with. <laughs> your mom, your kids, a partner, a friend, somebody. Build that strength of that relationship. Don't expect anything in return. Simply be brave enough to give wholeheartedly. My gosh, you can't imagine how much that comes back to you when it comes back right. It's amazing. You can make it through the toughest and dark. The world couldn't throw something at you that you couldn't deal with if you can get that part of this faith and spirituality down. <coughs> I just take my word for it. Take it to the bank. Believe it. Because I'm telling you right now, it's the truth. You cannot fail if you have the courage to love. Yeah, I'm done. I feel good about it. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? Because I'm sure I've got a lot more horseshit throughout. It'll be good. Donna sneaking on here. I see you. <laughs> well, guys, I appreciate everything. I'm going to stop the recording on this. And, uh, and I just, like I say, I, I appreciate everybody coming here and supporting all this. I really do. And uh, if you enjoy it, like it, share it. All that good stuff that goes with the YouTube. I mean, there are some, there are some details that are involved. Like, share, and subscribe, whatever the fuck that all means. But if you would do it, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and don't be afraid, because somebody's going to make fun of you about this. If you share this video with Brian Wilton talking about love, I promise you, somebody's going to say some shitty comment about it. Just be ready. I'm just telling you. But I got your back. I'll eat them up. <laughs> Y'all have a good night and. Uh, have a great Monday. And if anybody gets finds himself in a tough spot, reach out to me. Well, we sure do yeah. appreciate you, Brian. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Y'all have a good night. Let's see here.